Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. My name is Pastor Michael Eton, and I serve as the pastor here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church at 311 North Dunbar in Falls Valley, Oklahoma, Garvin County. And today I've come to share with you this week at Bethlehem, this week at Bethlehem. But before I share the announcements, I want to extend the personal invitation for you to join us here at Bethlehem Baptist Church this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, into which what we are calling the launch, the launch, April the 4th, 2021. I would love to see your face in the place for your first visit because we have been under COVID co protocols the first quarter of this year and this Sunday is the launch. We're coming back to the Assembly of God here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church and we'd like to extend a personal invitation for those who don't have a church home, for those who may have moved into Paul's Valley during this time, or those who are seeking a church home. We'd love to see your face at the Bethlehem Baptist Church on April the 4th. Uh, 2021 here in this place. And also we are encouraging during the launch, all of our disciples, the Bethlehem Baptist disciples who have not been assembling with us the first quarter of this year, we're calling you to come back in Jesus' name, to come back to worship God together in the assembly at Bethlehem Baptist Church. And this is uh, Resurrection Sunday as well. I said, this is Resurrection Sunday as well. And there are many churches that have been closed down for a whole year who are coming back into the assembly of God doing Resurrection Sunday. So Bethlehem, we are doing the same, and we want to meet you once again in the household of the Lord of the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. You know the address. You know where we are. And remember, this is Resurrection Sunday. If you so choose, put on your Sunday best. Invite your family. Invite your friends. Invite your associates uh, like we always do. We're going to take off where we left off in Jesus' name. So Resurrection Sunday, April the 4th, 2021. We look forward to see our old friends and to visit with our new friends here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. So happy to see you this coming Sunday in Jesus' name. A few announcements. Uh, Tonight will, or Wednesday night, will be our Zoom uh, Bible study. We're going to continue uh, to have Zoom Bible study even after April the 4th and Zoom uh, Sunday school as well after April the 4th. We're going back to the time that we were in 2021. We were not all the way in, uh, but we were assembling and worshiping every Sunday. So remember, Bethlehem, I'm going to send out the information about Zoom uh, Bible study uh, with this video. And I'll tell you a little bit later more about the Bible study a little later. But uh, this week at Bethlehem, we want you to be in that Zoom Bible study, but we also want you to this Friday to be fasting and praying, be fasting and praying for the launch, for the launch, which is Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, the launch we initially. We're fasting and praying. We'll continue to fast and pray as we are fasting and praying to break the chains of this COVID time, to break the chains of this COVID time. So we have turned the curve in our fight for uh, COVID-19 or against COVID-19, but we still have a ways to go. And that's why we'll continue to fast and pray this Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we're fasting and praying for our church, fasting and praying for our city, fasting and praying for the counties that make up this great state of Oklahoma, as well as fasting and praying for this great country. This Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., please join me, 
fasting and praying. Jesus said, this kind comes out, but by fasting and praying, and we don't want to take these moments for granted. We want to fast and pray in Jesus' name. And this is one of the ways that we stay connected, and we want to uh, thank you, Bethlehem, for staying connected with us with our tithings and offerings. You have continued to give faithfully all through 2020 and all through 2021. And we want to thank you for your giving. And we know that this is one of the most important disciplines of the Christian life. Because if you really want to be blessed of God, you have to be right in this area of your finances. Malachi chapter 3 is the only place in the Bible where it says that you can test God. In other words, you can test God by going to the highest uh, building and jumping off to see if he will catch you. And he doesn't tell you to test him that way. Only one way that he tells you to test him or try him. And that is in this area of giving. And he says he had the ability to rebuke the devourer as well as he can open the windows. Newer translation says floodgates of heaven. And then many of us have been blessed because we continue to give in this pandemic time. And we're living like last month's series, like that tree planted by the water. God is enabling us to be fruitful, even in an uncertain time because of our giving. We want to thank you, Bethlehem. You know how we give here. The plates are out in the sanctuary. You can give through the mail, P.O. Box 563, P.O. Box 563. And you can visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com, and you can give that way. So we want to thank you for staying connected, and as always, I want to drop the dime for a Zoom Sunday School. Be prepared and be ready for Zoom Sunday School this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. It's going to still be in Zoom. And we're going to have Zoom Sunday School. And after that, we're going to leave where we are and we're going to come and join collectively, no longer in virtual church. We're going to be in real church. We're not collecting in virtual church. We'll be in real church. So come on down to the sanctuary as we will worship God in spirit and truth once again within this sanctuary. Amen and praise the Lord. Looking forward to the reassembly, if you would, the launch April 4th, 2021. Now I need to tell you about this word and this series that I have entitled you that we're going to share in tomorrow night's Zoom class and series entitled, uh, This Is Us, This Is Us. And I've been saying throughout this time that we've gotten a tie, uh, a literal tie from the program, Sterling uh, K. Brown, uh, Deacon Jackson's uh, auntie is his mother-in-law and I found out about this after we started this series and we're so excited because it's like God was tying us not only to the television program, but tying us to this series that God is saying, this is us. I came across this text, and many of us who've been around this church for a long time, we know Romans 8 and 31, the latter part of this, but I saw it at a different angle this time. It says, if God is for us, what about us? God is for us. Then who can be against us? I saw the first us, and I saw the second us, and I said, hey, this is us. God is trying to let us know in uncertain times that regardless of what you're going through, because the context of this verse is what can separate us from the love of God. And God goes through so much to let us know that nothing separate us from the love of God. You may be feeling separated right now. You may be feeling separated from God because you're sick. You may be feeling separated from God because you got laid off. Separated from God because you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Uh, you may have gotten eviction notices, uh, uh, car repos. Your, your family may have fallen apart. You may feel separated, but the word of God says that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which means that you've got to ignore 
the circumstances and the way you feel because our feelings many times is not sanctified. Our feelings many times is not holy. In other words, we can be a Christian and feel wrong. And that's why God challenges us to stand on his word and allow his word to be real in our lives, not the circumstances that we feel in our lives. God says today, if God is for us, who can be against us? I want you to be encouraged, church, and this, this is us series. And the final word in this series is entitled Hedgeless in Pandemic Times. Hedgeless in Pandemic Times. And Job, we're going to look at Job chapter 1, verses 9 to 12, but you really need to uh, read the whole context. And this is a picture in the background of the biggest hedge over there in England biggest hedge in the world or the tallest hedge in the world. And we're going to see what God does uh, to his servant Job as he was boasting upon Job. And many times we go through troubles as Christians and we go through trials as Christians because God is in the heavenly boasting upon you and, and saying and, and putting you before the devil, even as he goes about uh, seeking who he can kill, steal, and destroy. You see, in Job's case, God said, and many of you listening at the sound of my voice in situations that you don't understand, that you that you uh, 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 maybe even mad at God or confused about God and situations in your life, it was God that said to that old devil. Have you considered my servant Job? And Job said, hey, I can't touch him because you've got the tallest hedge in the world around him. And you bless everything that he does. And God says, I'm going to give you permission to get past the hedge and touch him. And, and the devil was saying that he was going to curse him to his face. But God knew Job was a man of character and God to glorify him in the midst of pandemic times. And I wonder if there's somebody listening at the sound of my voice. Uh, you're tempted to not believe. You're tempted to uh, disbelieve God. You're tempted to uh, believe that God is not real because of the circumstances. But don't you know God believed that you could handle these circumstances and this time in your life? Don't you know one of the greatest blessings that you could have in this life is to glorify God in your sufferings? As a matter of fact, most of us know this is Holy Week. And don't you know that God removed the hairs from Jesus? Hello, somebody. And Jesus had to suffer during Holy Week. Jesus had to be crucified in Holy Week. Jesus had to be nailed to the cross and raised up between two things during Holy Week. God removed the hairs and he knew that Jesus would be able to Glorify him in the midst of his suffering. Don't you know that the greatest way that you can glorify God is not when he bless everything that your hands touch. The greatest way you can glorify God is when he trusts you to remove the heads, when he trusts you with a little problems, with a little tribulations. And when you're able to do as Job did and glorify God, I mentioned that on Sunday, he had a prayer. On his heart, a hallelujah, anyhow. When God removed the hedge, can you have a hallelujah, anyhow? When God moves the hedge, can you glorify God? Oh, in the valley, as opposed to the mountaintop, anybody can glorify God in the, on the mountaintop, but can you come down to real life? situations and circumstances uh, into which real people have to suffer. Can you glorify God uh, in the midst uh, of heartache, in the midst uh, of losing your loved one, your mate, your child, uh, your auntie, your mother? Can you glorify God? Uh, and if you think uh, God uh, is doing you wrong, look what happened when, when what God did uh, for you and for me uh, Oh, when he had to take down the heads uh, from his only 
only begotten son when he had to take down the heads and allow Jesus to die and his own son oh didn't oh curse God his own son oh a glorified God in his sufferings and he died for our sins was buried and raised again on Easter hello Easter Easter is coming don't you know for you and for me don't you know trouble don't last the old folks say always I said trouble don't last for always but you've got to be faithful when there is no head when God is not blessing everything that your hand touch you've got to be faithful this may be the most important moment oh in your life where you can glorify God like Jesus on the cross the most important moment the most important time if you heard me preach before we saw him do the miracles we saw him raise Lazarus from the dead we saw him speak peace oh to the songs and sleep through the songs we saw him oh say to the ten lepers go and be healed we saw the miracles but don't you know if he was not able to live in this endless moment in time all the miracles would mean nothing all the healing would mean nothing all the feeding would mean nothing he was born to die and somebody's at that place in time you were born oh to suffer at this moment in time and God says be encouraged in your head this moment but don't you know Easter is coming in Jesus name I've said enough I've said enough you need to listen tomorrow doing Zoom Bible study Bethlehem and also if you're not a member of Bethlehem and will not get those Zoom calls join us uh, right here on Facebook Live, facebook.com uh, backslash Pastor Michael Eton at six o'clock. We're going live and we're going to share this message, hatchless in pandemic times. Job chapter one, verse nine through 12. Join us tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Bethlehem and saints of God. I want to thank you for listening to this week at Bethlehem. And we want you to join you tomorrow or join me tomorrow in Zoom Bible study. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.